Hey, I am standing here on Marsh Creek, and this video series is going to be Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg. Now, Lysander Cutler, General Lysander Cutler, was in Brigadier General James Wadsworth's division of the First Corps, and we looked at the First Corps arrival at Gettysburg in an earlier video series, and this video series is going to complement that, and it's going to concentrate on the brigade of Lysander Cutler. Now, on June the 30th to an overnight to July 1st, 1863, Lysander Cutler's brigade was camped on the north side of Marsh Creek in this little meadow over here. On the other side of the creek, in this direction, was camped um, the brigade of Solomon Meredith. Uh, and we did a video with the 6th Wisconsin at Gettysburg, so they were over in this area. Now, Cutler's brigade consisted of, and in the morning of July 1st, when General Reynolds ordered the 1st Corps to march to Gettysburg, Lysander Cutler's brigade in this field over here began to march up the Emmitsburg Road in this direction in the following marching order. The 76th New York, followed by the 56th Pennsylvania followed by the 147th New York Volunteers. Behind them was the 95th New York. And then behind the 95th New York was the 14th Brooklyn, also known as the 84th New York Volunteers. Following them and ending the brigade was Hall's 2nd Main Battery. Now Hall's 2nd Main Battery had six three-inch ordnance, ordnance rifles. Now, the marching order that I mentioned, the 76th New York, 56th Pennsylvania, 147th New York, 95th New York, 14th Brooklyn, and the 2nd Main Battery, um, the way they marched off here would determine the position of the regiment during the Battle of Gettysburg. So that is important uh, as we continue this video series. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 1 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Aid at Gettysburg Part 2 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm here on the Emmitsburg Road at the Nicholas Cordori Farm. Of course this farm was a uh, farm that was here along the Emmitsburg Road in 1863 as it is today and it raised cattle and brought the meat from the cattle that was raised and slaughtered here to a market uh, on the York Turnpike up near the Gettysburg Square. Now, Cutler's Brigade moves uh, in a different direction when they arrive here at the Nicholas Corps Dory Farm. As we've seen in our first Corps arrival at Gettysburg and our John F. Reynolds at Gettysburg video series, John Reynolds and his staff would proceed northbound along the Emmitsburg Road. However, the first Corps and Cutler's Brigade being in the first Corps would turn here at the Nicholas Corps Dory House in this direction and head westward toward the Lutheran Seminary and Seminary Ridge. Um, there, along their line of march, they would be placed into line by Wadsworth, and John F. Reynolds would actually place one of their artillery pieces, which we're going to look at in an upcoming video. But again, this is where the route of the First Corps and Cutler's Brigade in the First Corps changed on the morning of July 1st, 1863, when they arrived here at the Nicholas Corridori House. As they proceeded in this direction, they then cut across the field here by this orchard and crossed over the um, farms uh, that belonged to William Bliss and David McMillan heading out toward the Lutheran Theological Seminary and Seminary Ridge, where then they would be placed in line and engaged in battle on the morning of July 1st, 1863. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 2 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. At Gettysburg, Part 3 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, and I'm standing here on Route 116 at the Lutheran Seminary area. Uh, in 1863, this was the Fairfield Road. Now, when Cutler's Brigade turned off at the Nicholas Corridori Farm in that direction, they headed directly here. When they got to the... Uh, this area, they passed by the Fairfield Road and also at that time,
there was the Middletown Road, which was a road that went into the middle of town that went right through this area right here. And we did a video on the old Middletown Road that you'll want to go back and watch. Um, as they approached the Fairfield Road, fences obstructed their way. Now, brigade pioneers and some men from the 76th New York were sent to take down the fences right here along the, the Fairfield Road. Um, the 56th Pennsylvania loaded their weapons right here where we're standing and local women began to meet the troops in this area and give them water. They would then head in this direction toward the seminary passing the Samuel Schmucker house uh, heading right by the Lutheran Theological Seminary and then out to a swale along the Chambersburg Pike. And in our next video, we'll talk about what happened there in the swale and why they were in the swale. Um, I do want to mention that two houses that stand by, this one here across the road and the Samuel Schmucker house over here, also are battle damaged structures that still have art pieces of artillery shells stuck in the brick on the side of the houses. So again, on the morning of July 1st, 1863, this area uh, at one time was almost the center uh, of action here around 9.30 in the morning of July 1st, 1863. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 3, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Hey, this is going to be Cutler's Brigade Part 4 at Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And as we look at the Lutheran Theological Seminary in front of us, it was Cutler's Brigade in the morning of July 1st that entered this area and came down into this low-lying swale right here where we're going along the Chambersburg Pike. Um, the while they were doing that, the battle had been raging on in the distance through Emanuel Harmon's farm and had just crossed Willoughby's Run. Pegram's artillery, who were stationed on the following ridge after McPherson's in the distance, um, their battalion was on Hare's Ridge, had supported that Confederate infantry advance across the Emanuel Harmon farm. Now, cutting across the Chambersburg Pike in this little low-lying swale area here, the 76th New York, still leading the march, uh, they began out of the firing range of Pegram's, who was one ridge over. Now, of course, the 56th Pennsylvania moves into this area, and they cross the Chambersburg Pike, headed over here toward the railroad cut. Then something strange happens. John F. Reynolds gets Hall's battery, their main battery, which is at the rear of the march line, and rushes them to the front, butting in front of the 147th New York. He gets Hall's, they cross the 147th, and then head over to the ridge where he personally places them over on McPherson's Ridge. And we touched on that in our video series, John F. Reynolds at Gettysburg. While he did that, they crossed in front of the 147th New York Volunteers, which had become confused by the move. Instead of the 147th and the other regiments crossing here in the swale, they now, along with the 14th Brooklyn and the 95th New York, head over to the McPherson Farm area. And later on, they'll cross the Chambersburg Pike on the height and cross over the railroad cut that way. They lose their place, they follow the 95th and the 14th Brooklyn to the McPherson farm where they are now in support of Hall's battery. About five minutes later, the regiments will then cross the Chambersburg Pike up there and then over to the railroad cut. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, part four on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is gonna be Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, part five here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and it's here where Hall's second main battery, moved out of line by Major General John Fulton Reynolds, places the battery right here in this position. Now their job at this point was to draw fire from Pegram's artillery battalion, which was located over here where you see this red colored roof in the distance. That is the Frederick Herr Tavern, and they were all along on both sides of the Chambersburg Pike over there with their artillery b b uh, battalion and also Brander's artillery over here uh, to the north side 
of Hers Ridge Road. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 5, here at Hall's Main Battery on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is going to be Cutler's Brigade, Part 6, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're looking at one of the monuments of the 14th Brooklyn, also known as the 84th uh, New York Volunteers, here on McPherson's Ridge, here on the old McPherson Farm. And it was here that Reynolds had a conversation with Colonel Fowler of the 14th Brooklyn. This was the last conversation that Reynolds would ever have. And we looked at this in our Forward, for God's sake, Forward, John F. Reynolds at Gettysburg uh, series. Now, the 14th Brooklyn and the 95th New York, which were just on the other side of the John Byrne statue, were in support of uh, Hall's second main battery here on the pike that were drawing the fire from Hers Ridge from Pegram's artillery. These two regiments were here to support them. Um, in that conversation he has with Reynolds, Reynolds then takes off on his horse and rides right along here, along Herbst Woods, over to the spot where about 15 minutes later he would be killed. We're now at 10 o'clock in the morning. Just as Reynolds drives, rides away, an old man of 69 years old, John Burns, walks up to this spot um, and asks to join the fight. One of the soldiers from the 95th uh, yell out to him, Go back home, old man. And Byrne walks away and then later joins up and fights and is wounded fighting with the Iron Brigade. Now, of course, John Burns was a 69-year-old civilian here in Gettysburg uh, armed with a flintlock musket in his civilian clothing, joined the fight as the only civilian to fight at the Battle of Gettysburg, being wounded and actually being captured by Confederates, but he was let go when he said that he was in a civilian clothes with a flintlock uh, musket looking for some cows that had escaped. So he, he made up a nice little fat story there and got out of a lot of trouble, which he could have been executed for. Burns does walk away and joins up with the Iron Brigade. Uh, but again, this is part of Cutler's Brigade as, uh, as Fowler, Colonel Fowler from the 14th Brooklyn, has the last known conversation um, with John Fulton Reynolds. It is also here near this spot where General Harry Heath was wounded. Just on the other side of this fence uh, is an old tree stump. And it's known as the uh, Harry Heath Witness Stump. And as a bonus, I'm going to take you over there. This is the tree that Heath was wounded on uh, on the morning, or wounded by, rather, on the morning of July 1st, 1863. Of course, the tree died and fell down and is rotted, and probably within the next 20 years will be totally gone. So... But we'll take a walk over here to the fence, and this is the tree stump where Harry Heath was wounded on July 1st. All this action with Reynolds and Cutler's Brigade, uh, Dow's main battery happening in this area uh, around 10 o'clock in the morning of July 1st, 1863. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 6, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Hendrick Hurst Tavern, it was here... In the morning of July 1st, 1863, that Pegram's Artillery Battalion was set up uh, all along here on both sides of the Chambersburg Pike, facing in that direction there. Now, this battalion had 20 guns. Uh, they had five of them that were set up right here, and then Brander's Battery set up just to the north here on Hers Ridge Road. Now, of course, in 1863, these batteries that were set up on both sides of the Chambersburg Pike were looking in that direction. And of course, uh, a lot of this growth that you see was not there. So they had a very easy view of the Union soldiers. Uh, this, this artillery had supported the Confederate attack as they made their way up the Chambersburg Pike, fought on through the Emanuel Harmon farm, crossed Willoughby Run, and then headed over to the Edward McPherson farm where the fighting got hot and heavy between 9.30 and 10 o'clock in the morning of July 1st, 1863. But this here is the site of Pegram's Confederate Artillery Battalion on the morning of July 1st, 1863. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 7.
on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Part 8 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm standing here in the area where Brander's Virginia Battery, also, also known as the Letcher Artillery. Now these batteries uh, had two 10-pound Parrots, two Napoleon guns. And they were pointed in the direction of our camera here on the morning as a part of Pegram's Artillery, which was here along uh, the Chambersburg Pike. And these guns were focusing in this direction here. In front of us in the distance, you can see a house and a barn here. That was owned by a man named James Wills, and it was rented to a tenant farmer, a black tenant farmer named William Job. Um, the focus of Brander's artillery was this ridgeline beyond the uh, Job farm over here looking at Sheeds Woods in the distance. What was the reason for that? Because just over here where the lane behind the barn goes back to the woods is the monument to the 76th New York Infantry. And that was the aim of the Brander's artillery. They did quite a bit of damage to the 76th New York Infantry which was just over there on the ridge line on the morning of July 1st, 1863. And if you remember, the swale was over here. Cutler's Brigade was supposed to cross the Chambersburg Pike and then line up on this ridge line. Some of the confusion sent them over to the McPherson barn, and Hall's main battery was brought over in this direction to concentrate their fire on Pegram's artillery battalion. Branders sat here to the north. Their focus was aiming just past the Job Farm at the 76 New York Volunteers. This has been Cutler's Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 8, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Brigade at Gettysburg, Part 9, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're looking at the monument to the 56 Pennsylvania Infantry in Cutler's Brigade. Now, after crossing the swale over here, they headed in this direction, and they come into line here alongside of the 76 New York, which is here to their right. Now, of course, we talked about the 76 New York in our last video, as they were the subject of Brander's artillery fire going across the Job farm right here at them. Um, but to the left of the 56 New York volunteers, or 56 Pennsylvania volunteers, in this direction, back toward the railroad cut, there was nobody there. There was a large gap, which was supposed to be filled by the 147th Pencil, or New York Volunteers in the line of march. That was messed up when Hall's battery was placed over by the McPherson barn by John Reynolds. And, and then the 147th New York moved into the McPherson farm. We'll talk about their positioning as they were there for five minutes on our next video. But this was the gap that was created by the movement of Hall's battery over in the swale coming off the Lutheran Theological Seminary. This has been Cutler's Brigade, Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, and we're passing the monument for the 147th New York Infantry, which sits here near the railroad cut. Now, there was a gap here on July 1st, 1863, because the 147th did not first be placed in line here. They actually moved forward to the Edward McPherson barn area and house over there that you see in the distance. Um, when the Hall's main battery was placed in a position, the 147th got confused. They moved up with the 14th Brooklyn and the 95th New York to the McPherson farm. They were there for about five minutes. And when they were there, they then moved to their right and crossed the Chambersburg Pike near the crest of the hill. Now, as we get here on top of the railroad cut bridge, you can see in the distance a low-lying area here in the distance. That is where the 147th crossed, and then right here by this tree line is where their first position was. Of course, they would be beaten back into this area. Now, when they were placed out here, they were placed um, on the... Uh, reverse slope of the military crest which is on the far side downward you can see the slope right here this is the reverse slope the very crest of the hill and then the forward slope would be right against the wood lines they were placed on the reverse slope fall could move up to the crest to see the enemy and then fall back and then eventually they would fall back to their positioning here along cutler's brigade line this has been cutler's brigade part 10 
on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.